Hi you guys, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and today we're outside and I thought we could talk about what I take with me when I go plain air painting. Um, I still have my bag all packed up from this weekend and I thought we would look inside and see what I take with me for mixed media plain air painting. So the first thing to talk about is this bag. I like it a lot. It's got tons of compartments and many of them are like lined with a waterproof type fabric. Um, or water resistant anyway and there's lots of padding in between the layers and there's even this back compartment is fully padded because it's meant for like a laptop but it works great for my camera gear um, so my camera gear goes in this back one um, and then of course I always take my water bottle of water and I can, I'll link all everything that I show you down below that I can. Some of it I can't, but what I can, I will link. Um, and then let's open it up and see what's inside. So obviously the non-painting essentials. <laughs> we have sunscreen, um, the EcoSmart organic insect repellent, and then I also have the plant therapy nature shield essential oil plant or plant um, insect repellent um, I always take those with me in a bag just in case so they don't leak and then of course I have my hat <laughs> and you saw my tripod and camera in the cover photo of this um, if I don't feel the the tripod that you're on right now can you see the legs I don't know but it um, folds up pretty small it's just I think an Amazon Essentials Basics tripod. Um, it folds up pretty small. It fits in my backpack. So sometimes I take it with me, but if I don't feel like taking it with me, then I bring this little handheld one, which is great. Um, you can press this button down and move the camera so you can tilt it and then lock it in place. Um, so I use this a lot too. And then now to the interesting stuff. So the two sketchbooks I've been taking with me lately are these two. Um, this is a watercolor sketchbook. I've talked about this one before on my channel. Um, I always forget who made it. Um, it says handbook manufactured and distributed by Global Art Materials Travelog. It says, I'll link this down below. I got this on Amazon. Um, this was the sketchbook that I was the most happiest with for water media until recently this is one of the ones i just did uh this was interrupted when i dropped my camera and broke it I, and i'm filming filming on my new lens today <laughs> well new to me um but it is working great so far um this did not get finished though because of the camera issues <laughs> um i was the most happy with this for water media um until I found this one. I mean, I'm still really happy with this one, but this is a good second choice and it's a whole, whole lot cheaper. And I can't talk about where I got it yet. <laughs> You'll be seeing it later, either later this week or maybe next week, depending on how long it takes. Um, and I will talk about where I got it. <laughs> um, but this is also a 100% cotton sketchbook. Um, and I was just playing with it the other day. Um, and I am enjoying it and enjoying it very much. It takes water very very well um lots of i had did like full watercolor washes on several pages and you can see it's not really um rippled or anything at all so um <laughs> yeah we'll talk about that more later in the week and it comes in lots of different pretty fabrics okay now on to the fun stuff oh a hair tie that's not fun but essential if you have long hair so this is the fun stuff. Um, let's see, what should I do first? Let's do this. So this is my pencil roll thing. Um, I will talk about where I got this as well with this video later in the week or next week. So what we have here, let's take a look at what we have. Um, we have obviously a bunch of colored pencils, a couple Pigma Microns, two white gel pens. This is one of my two favorite mechanical pencils for sketching with. And then um, my fountain pen. Um, this is the, I don't know. I should have looked it up before I came out. I'll 
pop it up on the screen somewhere. Um, but this is a great fountain pen. It wasn't too expensive. I think it might have been downright cheap, like somewhere in the $7 to $15 range. And the reason it's cheaper is because I have my um, Platinum Carbon Black ink in it, which is not quite waterproof, but pretty darn close. The only thing is either use it in a fountain pen that um, you don't care about too much or you have to make sure you don't store it for a long time with the ink in it if it dries in here it will plug up your fountain pen and um you might not be able to recover it although i could do a video on that too um i've brought some fountain pens back from being nearly destroyed from not um uh, waterproof ink <laughs> so i could talk about how to the steps you can go through through to try to save it if you if it's a last ditch thing um but this is my favorite for if you're going to do watercolor and wash just let it dry for a few minutes before you go over it with watercolor which is one of the reasons why i bring two sketchbooks with me because then i can work on something else while the first one is drying um, but that is the ink that i am the most happy with as far as going over it with a water media afterwards um, I would like to try the Noodler's Ink in Black. I haven't tried that one. I hear good things about that being able to go in fountain pens and not being too bad and also being fairly waterproof, but I haven't tried that one yet. Um, I have tried their Golden Brown, and that one is not waterproof. It was supposed to be water resistant, but it is not. So that's a tip for you there. Um, so then I have a Jelly Roll white gel pen, but my most favorite gel pen, white gel pen, is the Uniball Signo Broad in White. This is my favorite one. I have, the last time I placed a Blick order, I ordered like three of them because they're my most favorite and I like to always make sure I have them on hand. Um, and then my favorite pencil for sketching with, second favorite, this is the Uni Cura Toga. Um, and it's refillable. You can even buy refillable erasers, although I haven't done that, but you can. Um, and it, I've had this pencil, oh, three years now, and it's still going strong. I use it heavily. This one, and I have a, um, I forget, the, it's a silver metal one, and it rotates the lead as you click it so that it constantly stays sharp. Um, and that is my other favorite pencil, although I don't have it with me here. Um, and then, let's see, I have a blue color race pencil for sketching. This is one of my favorites for sketching with. I like this one and the terracotta one for sketching outdoor sketches the most. And then I have a, a selection of the Pigma Microns. I have the O2, the O8, and this was supposed to be the O5, but I couldn't find my O5, so this is the smallest one. Um, but generally I'd use the 05 or the 03. I wouldn't use this for sketching outside normally. Um, I brought it because I was in a, a rush. I packed this up to go uh, fishing with my husband and kids um, and it was like six in the morning and I just sort of threw things in and didn't look at stuff real closely. Um, and then these uh, are Prismacolors and these are from the selection of Prismacolors that are 50 plus or 100 plus years for light fastness and I have a range of like greens here I have their chartreuse the the jay green the kelp green the dark green the olive green and the green ochre if I had had a little more time I would have tried to pack up um, some more browns and grays but this has been working well for me. Like I said, I packed it up at six in the morning, but I've taken this on, I think two or three trips now, and I've been happy with the selection that I have. So, and then I have some luminance in, did I say this one? Yeah. Then I have the luminance in the chromium oxide green, the middle vertigra, I think it says, the light cobalt blue, the genuine cobalt blue, the dark indigo, um, the white, the dark flesh 40%, and the violet gray. So this is what I keep in my pencil roll when I go mixed media, plain air, sketching, and painting. Um, 
Oh, and an eraser. And I did have a gummy eraser here, but I took it out last night. Um, and I am very much liking this little roll that I got. Um, it's very Van Gogh-ish. <laughs> um, and it holds everything really securely, and I've been very happy with it. Um, and again, I will talk about that in a video later this week or next week. And then this is my wet media kit. This is just a makeup bag that I got from Walmart for like $2.50. And this little palette is so old, I don't know where I got it. I would guess I probably got it at Walmart as well, if I had to guess. Um, I think I did. But it's perfect. It's a little bit bigger. It's like index card size, and it fits in here perfectly. And then I always bring a, some paper towels and a spray bottle of water. And then I've got four water brushes here. These are the Arteza. I really like these brushes. They're not too expensive. I think they're like $11 for four. And they have actually a really good brush tip. I've been very happy with these. I've replaced them several times. They last forever, but I lose them or leave them behind or whatever. But I've been very happy with these water brushes. I highly recommend these. And let's see. Uh oh, I forgot. I took. I'll be right back. I left. I left something in the house. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So then I have a little pencil sharpener in here with a lid, so I don't leave any scraps behind in nature, and a couple binder clips for holding my sketchbooks open. And then the fun things. Okay, this is my gouache palette, and this is my watercolor palette that I just made this past weekend. And ever since I broke my camera lens and I realized I needed to have some sort of emergency fund to replace uh, any sort of equipment or whatever that I break, I have put myself on a new supply ban, <laughs> which is why I won't have an art haul in July. There's one coming up here in June, probably next week. Uh, and that will be the last one for a while until I have an emergency fund built up so I can replace things if they break. Um, but I wanted a watercolor palette to take with me this weekend and I didn't have another one like this. And since I couldn't buy something new, I had to make it. And I realized I got I got a new contact holder for my contacts, contact lenses. It's the, like the contact lens holder from Walmart. It was great value brand. It was like $1.28. And I realized this little case that the contact holder came in looked like it might fit my watercolor pans. And I put them in there and it fits eight of them absolutely perfectly. Uh -huh. So I actually, uh, maybe by the time this video goes up, I'll have a short up on my channel as well showing how I made this and all of that. Um, but it works absolutely perfectly. It doesn't open up. It shuts really tight. Um, I didn't even have to rubber band it for our fishing trip. It wasn't quite dry when I packed it up, which is why there's a little of the blue on the back, but everything's dry now. Um, and these are the colors. These are all Daniel Smith colors. Um, these are the ones that I use the most when I'm doing landscapes. So it's sort of like a landscape mixing palette. If I had had a choice, I would have had maybe one more square to hold a warm red color in here. But I didn't, so I, but I, I think it's, I'm making do good with what I have. So this is my little homemade watercolor palette and it is very small, very small, very small. So, and then this is my gouache palette. This one is, uh, I think, Meaden. I don't know how you pronounce it. And these are my Windsor & Newton gouache. The Windsor & Newton gouache, I don't think it's the pans. I think it's the gouache. They don't want to stay in the pans. They really, really shrunk up and get crumbly when they're in there and they fall out a little bit. I don't know, maybe I can't take wash with me, which is a shame because I've really enjoyed painting with it. I don't know how to keep them from getting crumbly and fall falling out. I mean, it's not a big deal to just put everything back in like this, like I just did when I get where I'm going, but I don't know. I really enjoyed taking the gouache with me. It's really not that big of a big deal. I'll probably still take it with me. I wish it were just a little bit tighter. And I think I just broke it. Did I just break it? No. For now, I suppose I could put the card in here. 
Nope, I can't. It's too big. So, that is my whole mixed media setup that I take with me when I go outside plain air painting. If you guys have anything you really like to take when you go plain air painting, uh, list it down below. I I think sometime, at some point I'd like to have a seat to sit on, like a folding seat that I could carry that's lightweight. So if you have any recommendations for that, that would be great. I do have, uh, I forget what it's called. I'll link it down below too. I have a travel watercolor palette that I got in one of my earlier art hauls uh, and it like folds out and it holds water and I just haven't set it up yet and I was in a rush um, the other night and I just did this and let it dry overnight and I felt like I needed some time to think about what colors I wanted to put in there so I haven't done that one yet. I do plan to do that. I would like to maybe have some more color choices at some point, but like I said, this worked great for this weekend. When I'm going fishing with the family, like I have other stuff in my backpack too, like water for everybody and oh, various whatever stuff we might need <laughs> when you go with kids. So like my actual painting stuff can't take up as much room. But I would like to set up the water, the big watercolor um, travel thing and take it with me at some point. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button. That helps YouTube know that my channel is putting out quality content and it helps show my content to other people, which helps support my channel. So I hope you like this video and until next time, happy creating. Mm -hmm.